Hello. And thank you to YABS, the Young Alberta Book Society, for providing this network on YouTube. This story is for slightly older listeners, and it's one that I have told for many, many years. It is also one that I get most questions about. The question usually is, did that really happen? Well, I'll let you be the judge of that. The story is about a friend of mine, a friend of a friend, who just bought a new house. She was very, very excited. Not only was the house the house of her dreams, but the neighborhood, the neighborhood was absolutely perfect. Everyone in that neighborhood had a dog, a cat, a rabbit, a pet of some sort, and no one complained. If they wandered around from one yard to the other, no one tied them up or fenced them in. And this is perfect for my friend. She had a dog, a golden lab named Midas. And for the first time in Midas's life, he didn't have to be fenced up or tied up. He was free to wander. And this was perfect. Well, it was perfect until one day when my friend came home from work. She came home and there was no Midas. All right, she thought, he's out playing with the other cats or dogs or children and he'll be home for supper. But time passed and still no Midas. And now she got worried for Midas had never missed a meal in his life. And so she started calling for him and calling and calling, still no Midas. So now she started walking through the neighborhood. And as she walked, it got darker and darker and darker. There was very little light thin sliver of moon, perhaps. As she got to the outskirts of town, there was a heavily wooded area, and she stopped, calling for her dog. And all of a sudden, something started coming through the woods towards her, something that moved very strangely. And as it got closer, she realized that it was Midas. But... He had something in his mouth. He was moving very strangely. And as he got closer and closer to her, she realized what that thing was. It was the neighbor's pet rabbit. She went over to the dog and took the rabbit out of the dog's mouth. It was no sign of what happened to it. No, no blood. But the rabbit was dead. Oh no, if the, if the neighbors find out what, what Midas has done to their rabbit, uh, they're, they're gonna ask him to be locked up or even worse. In her panic, she got an idea. She took the body of the rabbit, making sure no one saw her, and went back into her house. She closed all the curtains, and then she washed the body of the rabbit very, very carefully, and then took her blow dryer and dried the rabbit fur so it was nice and fluffy. And then she waited. She waited until she knew everyone else was fast asleep. And then she very quietly went into the neighbor's yard with the rabbit and put the rabbit's body back in the rabbit hutch. All right, she thought, the rabbit will be found in the morning. It will still be dead. But the neighbors won't know that Midas or I had anything to do with it. And so she went home feeling very, very confident. But the next morning, there was chaos. There was sirens. There was screaming. There was all sorts of mayhem. And when she went running out, there was her neighbor, absolutely hysterical. What? What happened? Oh, oh, people are, people are so weird today. Why? What? What happened? Well, you know where Pet Rabbit? Um, <coughs> yes. Well, it died the other day. We took its body out to the woods and gave it a lovely funeral. And some weirdo tug it up and brought it back. And that story of the H-A-R-E hair dryer. Now, this is a story that I told you. People ask me if it's true. But one day... When I was up in Yellowknife doing a storytelling workshop with Inuit people, 
they asked me to tell them an urban legend. And so I thought, well, this is one that everybody wants to hear. I'll tell them this. And so I did. And at the end, they just looked at me. And I said, what? And they said, why? What, why? Well, why would somebody who's presented with a perfectly good fur that's not got any holes or blood on it, give it away? And I thought, of course. Stories have a different place in different cultures. And we don't always know where they fit in that tradition. Thank you for joining me. My name is Gail DeVos, and I'm a storyteller.